And I go, no, no, I don't really care that much for money. But my wealth is spiritual. My artha, huh? the work that I did to advance my life has all been on the spiritual platform. So yes, I'm wealthy, but it's spiritual wealth. I don't care for this material wealth because it's going to go away. Huh? At the very least, at the end of my life, when I give up this body, I have to give up all the wealth associated with this body. But the spiritual values that I have accumulated and accrued by my devotional service stay with me forever. Try to understand. They don't ever go away. They don't ever, they're never lost. Huh? So that's real wealth. That's real wealth. And because I have that wealth, even though I don't have a lot of money, I can spend my time giving knowledge and tools, conceptual tools, and wisdom to others, and helping them in their devotional progress, in their spiritual life. See, I don't have to worry about my spiritual life. I've already got the result of a lifetime of devotional service, and I'm satisfied. Huh? So I don't need to worry about that, because I have artha, I have wealth. See, I'm a wealthy person. You know, so wealthy people, what do they do? Like Bill Gates, you know, he starts some big foundation for giving away the charitable uh, donations. Similarly, if you have spiritual wealth, what do you do? You start a, a spiritual school and you start giving away all your knowledge. And guess what? This is even more powerful form of devotional service than personal devotional service. This is why we try to engage all our students in preaching work. This is why we encourage everyone to form a local community and preach, uh, just like Arun is doing in Australia, a very nice work to uh, restore the process of devotional service, to restore Srila Prabhupada's teachings. We encourage all our God brothers especially to go out there and preach. Huh? Go out there and preach. And why are our God brothers preaching? Why are only a handful of them who are outside of ISKCON actually preaching? I say it's because most of them don't understand this process of devotional service. And so when they go out there and try to contact the public and present it, they're not successful. See? If you know what you're talking about, you're going to be successful. If you know what you're doing, Krishna is going to give you success. Huh? But if you're doing something wrong, if you're saying something or presenting something that's, that doesn't work, then how are people going to have any confidence in it? So I think maybe uh, devotees have gone out with the limited knowledge or imperfect understanding of devotional service, and they try to present to their friends and family and like that, and they fall flat on their face. <laughs> And they say, oh, I can't preach. You can't preach what exactly? Huh? If you're presenting this science of devotional service as it is, then you're going to be successful. Krishna promises this in Bhagavad Gita. Huh? He says that the one who get, presents the secrets of spiritual life to the devotees, he is my favorite. And there is no devotee more dear to me than him. And there could never be one more dear than him. Huh? So he gives uh, full facility to the devotee who's preaching. Thing is, we have to preach accurately. We have to repeat Krishna's message as it is, without changing anything. And most of the devotees have not heard Krishna's message as it is, because they've been listening to the leaders who don't have self-realization. They've been listening to leaders whose qualifications are only political, organizational, uh, who got voted in by some committee. You, you have to kick out that uh, imperfect understanding and go back to Srila Prabhupada's books and understand them uh, the way they are. I think the yeah, the tripod is a little loose, so it's slipping. Yeah. 
They have to go back and, and reread Prabhupada's books and look up the words in a dictionary and use the original definitions, not the changed definitions from ISKCON leadership, because that's what they do. They go through and they change the meaning of the words. That's why we discussed that subject in the very beginning of the, of the class today. So these are all anarthas. Anarthas means uh, misunderstanding or bad things or things that lead to failure, to poverty, uh, instead of to spiritual wealth. Artha means wealth. Anartha means poverty. So if you're suffering from poverty, either spiritual or material, it's because you don't understand these things properly. You need to go back and go over them until you get them, get it, get it right. Huh? Like Insi. Insi has been a student of ours for about a year, a year and a half now. And at first, she, had a, a, she was really mixed up. <laughs> she was trying to mix together um, Islam and Christianity and Vedic knowledge. And, and she uh, was asking questions that led me to understand that she was very confused. But because she applied herself nicely to the study, now Krishna is providing such wonderful results. Huh? Well, she immediately found a piece of land to buy. And better than that, in her everyday life, she's getting so much satisfaction from her relationship with Krishna, you see. So everybody can do this. Anybody can do that. It's a matter of being sincere. It's a matter of getting rid of the anarthas, not being attached to sinful activities, not being attached to a misunderstanding or misinterpretation of spiritual truths. But going back to the original subject, the original sources, and uh, getting a clear, accurate understanding of the actual process, and then doing it. So these anarthas, these lead to uh, falling down and misunderstanding devotional service. So let's go through some of the uh, different types of anarthas. And then in future classes, we'll go in a detailed way through the anarthas and uh, talk about them. Why are you looking at me like that? Are you afraid I'm going to talk about you? Who? Me? Me? Who? Who? Huh? Him? What? Him? No, it must be him. He's talking about him. <laughs> can't be talking about me. It must be me. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I'm reading from the uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu, which is a summary of the Nectar of Devotion uh, by Raghunath Das Goswami. Sorry? What page? What page? Oh, you've given the, oh, the file? The paragraph that you're reading, but I need to know the page. Oh, page 27. But in the, in the um, PDF file, it's page 59. Oh, it's a different page. Yeah, yeah, they didn't sync the page numbers, so. It says the Kata sheet? No. 59 in the, in the PDF file? That's the Kata sheet? No. I guess start reading and I'll just do a search. Okay. There are four types of anarthas. You could do a search on anarthas are of four kinds. I'm not reading exactly, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> four kinds. Yeah. There are four kinds. Four kinds. Anarthas are of four kinds. First kind is called Swarupa Brahma. That's different from Brahma. Brahma means illusion. Brahma means spirit. Got that? Okay. B H. Huh? Ba in Sanskrit is a different letter from ba. Ba and bha are two different letters of the alphabet. Don't confuse them. Right? So Brahma is different from 
Brahma. Okay? So Swarup means, Swarup means our original spiritual identity, our original form. Rupa means form. And Sva means original. So our original spiritual form, Swarupa, if we are in illusion about our real identity, uh, this is called Swarupa Brahma. The second is Asat Trishna. Asat Trishna. Trishna means thirst. Thirst. Desire. Uh, and Asat means that which is not eternal. In other words, material. Uh, remember Bhagavad Gita 2.16? That which is temporary does not really exist. Asa 